<laughs> I don't know. I just feel like doing that because uh, that's how a lot of YouTubers start out their videos, you know, and I'm trying to be just like everybody else. So if y'all didn't know, I use a Sony UWP wireless mic and for YouTube, it's, it's a phenomenal mic. But um, I've been digging. I've been doing a lot more corporate work, so I've been digging for a new mic and I found a solution that I think might help out with my workflow, but I... You know, haven't decided if this is going to be my mic system or if I'm going to be going to the tentacle system. But right now we're going to be going to a uh, undisclosed location, school, and we're going to be testing out the mics and comparing them out there. It's not going to be an in-depth review, but it's going to be a review. So the thing about wireless mics is that they require a wireless connection, and the ones that I use, the Sony UWP D21 mics, they connect through radio frequencies, which can you know interfere if you're like in the inner city or you know around a lot of TV antennas or radio antennas, it can interfere with your audio. I've run into an issue a while back when I used to do a lot of YouTube, you know, in public stuff, where we actually picked up on a radio station as we were filming in downtown. That's become a big issue with these mics, and if I'm at like a conference or something and recording it for like corporate work, it's not gonna be ideal to use something that could pick up other frequencies while there's other frequencies going on because you know if it's a conference they're you know sending off frequencies here and there doing all these different things and it can interfere with my audio and I could completely miss the shot. So I decided to look elsewhere and I decided to buy the Tentacle Sync mic. I bought it without the lav mic. It was just the actual Tentacle Sync track like box but the issue with that is that I was going to use my Sony mic which I'm using right now because I love the way it sounds. Sounds great. Works great but it's Sony wired, I guess, or whatever wiring system Sony uses, it's not compatible with the Tentacle Sync. I think the one that the Tentacle Sync uses is like Sennheiser or something like that wired, and I obviously am not using that with Sony. For this last shoot I had to do, I actually borrowed my friend's Rode like, Go 2 mic, and it worked perfectly fine on the Tentacle. And I borrowed Jersey's um, Tentacle Sync and Track E you know, to use it for the, the shoot so I can sync it through time code. And if you didn't know, the tentacle syncs are synced through time code and not through a wireless connection. Now I'm still using the Sony wireless mic, but I am going to be walking all the way over there. And as I'm walking, I'm going to be, you know, talking just a little bit, describing why I like the Sony mic and why I don't like it. I'm going to start walking back. Uh, I'm going to have Gary text me. Gary's with me. Come here, Gary. Come say hi. Gary's with me, he's uh, monitoring the audio. He's gonna text me whenever the audio starts cutting out so I can let you know how far we are. Actually, I don't even know, I'm just guesstimating. There's a bunch of people on the football field that I was gonna plan on going on and so I'm just gonna be walking straight back to this fence way back there, which is probably about a football in a quarter maybe field length away. So we'll see how far I can get. All right, so let me just adjust the camera so y'all can see me clearly. And now we'll get to walking. So as I'm walking away, you're gonna probably notice that the audio is gonna sound pretty good until I turn around. When I turn around, it's probably where it's gonna start messing up because there's interference with my body and the antenna. It should be good, a good most of the way. If not, then these mics are worse than I thought they were. I mean, for like, what, 600 bucks, they should be a lot better. But this mic is actually the mic a lot of YouTubers use whenever they're doing like pranks out in public. So it's a very good mic, but there's a lot of audio issues that come with it. As we're walking, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about you know this mic it's a uh, it's a wireless mic it has i think 24-bit audio i hope i'm walking in a straight line gary am i walking in a straight line okay yeah so it's basically 24-bit audio i believe the thing about 24-bit audio is that you can't really adjust it when it comes to being out in public it's very loud and sometimes you want to turn down the audio a little bit and you know talk you know a lot quieter or have the audio sound a lot quieter without you know affecting the actual quality of the sound with 24 bit you don't really have the range to do that and it's not like 32 bit float which the tentacle syncs have and they can work flawlessly because you have it's basically like raw video but for audio i'm surprised it's still connected i ain't gonna lie i'm probably about 40 50 yards away at least and still going and going and going. Gary still hasn't texted me and I'm almost to the fence so we're gonna see if it worked or not. If it works it should be working because he hasn't replied or hasn't texted me. But yeah again what I was saying about this mic so I did try to use this mic on the tentacle sync and unfortunately it didn't work. This mic's so great. It sounds so good and I'm all the way to the fence now. Gary do you hear me fine? Just reply text me yes or no. Yes okay I'm gonna turn around. Did it affect the audio at all? Is it cutting out as I'm talking? Because now I have my back towards the fence. No. Damn. The range on this is crazy. I did not expect it to be this good. All right, I'm gonna be walking a little bit further down the street and just turn the camera, pan it towards me a little bit. Should be able to just to pan the camera a little bit. Oh, it just cut. Okay, I'm the same distance, but what I think is weird with it was this metal pole. This metal pole definitely has some interference. Audio, do you hear me right now? 
it should be out because I'm like walking dead in front of him. He's not replying, so it must be cut. Cutting, yeah. See, the metal pole has definitely got some interference. So if you're like in a metal building, or a building with metal like pillars, and you're walking in front of it, it's gonna cut. It's gonna have that issue. So one thing I forgot to mention about this mic is that it is. This is what it looks like. It's it's very nice. It's a very nice mic. It's obviously beat up because it's taken some abuse. But the original version, the D11, it was good, but it was horrible. It, it was like not reliable with quality. Um, I haven't had too many issues with this, other than the one time I had the mic unplugged from the actual body pack and I had shut my camera case and messed up the tip of the mic. But other than that, I haven't had any real issues with these. These, the only thing that I don't like about the wireless is that these antennas are pretty sensitive. So yeah, I don't think this one has any problems. It shouldn't have problems because I haven't really abused it that much. But it gets to the point where these antennas can have a lot of issues. Like if they get damaged, they start making like a feedback noise when you touch them. One of my sub professors from my class, he had, I had showed him these mics because I wanted to like have a better understanding of them and how to do certain things on it. And he said these suck. Like if you're trying to be professional, he said these are horrible. There's a lot better mics for, you know, the price. And obviously this time code solution is gonna be way better than using this. Again, the wireless connection is not the strongest. They do sell this with two lav mics. So it has, you know, a second body pack that feeds out to the receiver. Uh, it has like extra antennas or extra port or something. It's, it's like, it's a lot bigger, a little bit bigger. I think like with components it has on it. But uh, yeah, this is not ideal for corporate work, but it is very ideal for like, you know, run and gun situations. It should sound absolutely horrible. Does it sound horrible? David Dobrik yeah. shit. <laughs> so yeah, the Sony mics, like onboard cameras suck. And this isn't a part of the video, but I just wanted to- It worked pretty good though, cause I can only hear myself in my right ear. Oh yeah, cause it's stereo audio. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, this is the left. I'm tripping. Stupid. Yeah, I'm right. on the left side of the camera, so I can only hear. <laughs> yeah, so what the cameras do is they shoot stereo. So obviously, you never want to use this mic because it sucks. Now, if you're like in a loud environment, like a basketball game or something, you can get away to using just that or a concert because it's, you know, stereo. You can make it down to one track and you won't have left and right. The thing about this is that nobody wants to use this. This isn't a part of the video. This isn't a part of the comparison. Another thing that you, I could use is a, you know, shotgun mic. And these can actually work in conjunction with the tentacle sinks, which I'll show in a minute. But I'm just going to show you what the actual shotgun mic itself sounds like. Having this connected to the tentacle sink gives you 32-bit float for this. Now, the only way 32-bit float won't work is if you're using, you know, this and you're overloading the mic. That probably looked very foul. But if you overload the mic, it'll, you know, it'll peak on the mic, but it won't peak in the actual audio. But it will still be peaked because you're overloading the capsule of the mic. That was probably a lot of stuff that made no sense, but it makes sense. Just trust me. Just believe me. Do not speak directly into the mic like that or it'll sound like crap. But I'm gonna connect the, you know, the shotgun mic now. I'm sorry Gary, this is probably gonna hurt your ears if you have the headphones on. Alright, so that should have made a difference. Does that make a difference? Yeah. Alright, so the thing about this shotgun mic, I use the DD V3 Pro or something like that. D3 Pro, I don't know. Whatever the something 3 Pro mic is. It's a pretty good mic. I use this for like a lot of games or like scratch audio if I need it for, you know, video or something. The range on this, we were testing it out before I started recording it and it's actually pretty good. Like I can walk back here. I, obviously I'm still talking loud so you can be able to hear me pretty good, but I'm probably about, you know, 20 feet away now and I'm gonna start talking softer. Can you still hear me, Gary? I'm talking very softly. I am like almost at the end of the parking lot, no, the end of the parking lot, technically in the middle of the parking lot is where we're starting, but you can still hear me? That's great. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Twenty-four times three, that's like 70, seventy-two? Yeah. Seventy-two, probably about seventy-two feet or so. That, you know, each pace is about three feet, right? Yeah, so about 72 feet. That's probably horrible math. I don't do math, bro. I actually failed calculus in high school, so I had a three in the class. <laughs> so one more thing before I show you how the tentacle sinks works is actually I'm gonna show you how it sets up real quick. As you can tell, I only have one of the mics on. So if you look at this, you can see that you have the receiver at the bottom and technically the transmitter at the top. And one cool thing about these is, I don't know if you noticed that one of the bars turned orange. If I put, this is the, this is the actual tentacle like app, right? If I put the transmitter closer to here, the recorder, it highlights orange. And then if I want to do the tentacle sync itself, that syncs time code to the audio, I mean to the camera, I just get the thing close and it pops up again. It's showing the mic because it's pretty close, but 
is showing that that one's orange too. So if you're on a big set, that's a good like way to determine which mic is which whenever you have it labeled. Of course, they each have colored bands. If you look, mine that's in my bag has an orange band and Jersey's is green. So it has a green band on the actual app. So if you look at the code running on the clock right now, it's currently not synced. They're both off by like a minute or so because I used these about a week ago. And so they're obviously not gonna be synced. If you look at the top, it says device needs to be synchronized. That's what we're about to do. So if you look how I have the app set up, I have the guest on top of the interview on bottom that's not like the most ideal setup but that's just what i did for the video or for my shoot as you can tell that it each time is off by a good minute or so and we're gonna fix that also if you notice right next to the tc on the tentacle recorder it says 23.98 that's the frame rate of the camera that you're gonna be using i'm shooting 30 frames per second on this video because for youtube i don't need 60 120 or i don't really care for 23 on youtube so i'm just gonna go shoot 30. so what i need to do is i need to sync this tentacle sync and the actual device recorder to each other through 30 frames per second instead of one being 23.98 and the other one being 29.97. So all I have to do is go into the bottom left, select this little clock wheel, you know, rotating thing, and it says sync, and then I make sure my frame rate is at 29. The time is actually gonna be the current time of day, so all I have to do is click start, and it says syncing them to each other and that's it. So as you can tell, they're both now synced up and I'm gonna put a freeze frame up so you can see them, you know, obviously exactly synced up to the millisecond and that's all you have to do. I forgot to mention that this time code capsule does have scratch audio. If you look, there's a little mic and it has it feeds scratch audio to the camera so you have it as a backup. I wish there was a way that you can uh, like connect a shotgun mic to this so you have better scratch audio for better syncing if for some reason it doesn't sync up right. That'd be ideal, but you know, you get what you get with the tentacle syncs. So yeah, I, I'm just gonna connect it now and you'll hear, I'll give you the little scratch audio and then I'll give you the actual time code audio. So I just ran into the issue I was talking to Gary about with off camera about these mics that they're great mics. They're, amazing but there's one issue is that you have to make sure you're actually recording on the device before you you know talk to the camera as i was you know talking about the app i could record on the app i'm obviously recording now if you look it says it's recording and it says you know the time code constant running is running to the camera i resynced them when i connected it back to the camera just to be safe as you can tell it's recording on here what i was talking about before i had to re-record everything is that this little capsule on the this little mic is called a lab concealer it's by bumblebee um I might have it linked below. I don't know yet. I'll see how, you know, if I want to or not because I have affiliate links down below and I don't know if it's on Amazon. So if it is, I'll have it linked below. It comes with a little wire guard that's on here that's for cloth, but I don't have it on because I forgot it at home. And the cloth guard pretty much keeps the clothes from rubbing directly onto the mic because it's kind of exposed. This isn't the one meant for the actual mic. It's meant for my Sony mic, actually. So when you buy this lab concealer, it comes with little sticky tape. It only comes with a few of them, but I bought a big box of them because I'd be going through them like crazy. They look like this, and then you just stick this to the back, and you pull it off, and it's, you know, there. You can actually get a few uses out of the tape, you know, keep reapplying it for like a couple times because it's very sticky, it, you know, sticks very well to skin and it sticks very well to clothes. I had it on my clothes already, I just took it off so I could re-record this. So I'm going to show you all that it sticks pretty well. So one thing about the lav concealer is that you can buy these little furries like you see on everybody's DJI mics and, you know, you can stick it to this with other tape that it, you have to buy separately as well. It comes with a few, but that's what the tape looks like. I've never used them before. Uh, I'm about to test it out. Should actually tore some of the fur off of this. But all you have to do is stick, you see that little opening? You stick the opening over the capsule of the mic. And as I'm doing this, I'm gonna actually give you all the demonstration of the scratch audio. As you can tell, the scratch audio sounds very bad. Um, it's not ideal for use, but if you have to sync it up manually, it works. Again, there should be no reason for you to sync it up manually. We're back to the lav mic. This is what the furry sounds like. It probably doesn't make a difference at all. What it can help with is actually the rubbing of your clothes as well. So if I have it on my skin, it'll help with the rubbing of the clothes. Now we are running out of daylight because sunsets in less than 10 minutes. So I'm gonna walk down there. Obviously the audio is not gonna cut out because again, it's time code based. So what I was saying earlier about 32 bit float on the tentacle sinks, ooh, the lights kicked on, is that no matter how loud or how quiet I talk, I can bring the audio up. So right now I'm gonna be talking, I'm gonna talk a little soft um it probably sounds like i am like literally like i'm whispering i'm literally whispering right now and it probably sounds pretty good you know like i'm talking normal um and then if i started to talk loud it literally is gonna like sound so good because it doesn't matter how loud i yell i'm literally yelling and it's not you know gonna sound like it's peaking at all there's a bunch of kids like playing football so they probably think i'm crazy but again i'm walking all the way over here there's gonna be no cutouts because it's straight time code and I have it synced up perfectly to the frame rate that I'm shooting, 4K 30. But for Sony's, it says 30, but it's actually going to be 29.97. 
and so I have it synced up to 29.97. Damn, there's a lot of ant piles here, and I'm trying like cautiously to not step on them. One issue, I wouldn't say it's really an issue, but one thing I noticed that if you're using these mics, you can't really shoot 120 or 60 because I know like half of it would be 29.97 for 60 and for 120, it'd be like a third of that. So the issue with trying to sync time code to those frame rates is that you're gonna have a delay. You didn't hear me yelling? That's cat. There's no way you didn't hear me yell, bro. I was, ye I was yelling as I was walking over there. Really? Yeah. We're losing daylight. This is pretty much the tentacle sinks. I'm not really going in depth on these uh, unless you want me to. Go ahead and comment down below and I'll make a video. Why are you laughing, bro? Who are you laughing at? I was just imagine you recorded all that and that shit didn't go. Like, I know. Imagine, <laughs> imagine Gary stopped the recording. Nah. Look, even though I walked all that distance, the time code is still synced up perfectly. It's kind of hard to like see them both at the same time. But yeah, they're synced. It would tell me if I needed to. So yeah, the best thing about these mics is that, again, they're time code. You don't need wireless. Um, ideally, you would want to make sure you keep the phone close to the receiver and transmitter so it'll constantly give you a proper readout. I don't think there's an issue with having the phone all the way down there and bringing it back. It shouldn't be a problem. You know, you want to make sure you have it pretty as close as, as close as you can. What I like about the app is that it also gives you this live audio listen. So if I play it out, you're able to hear what I'm saying as I'm saying it, and that's gonna sound horrible. You used to apparently not do that. You used to not be able to hear while you're recording, and now you can. Another thing is that you can have your recording gain adjusted however you want. There's no reason to do it if you're doing 32-bit flow, but I like to try to get it as close to as good as possible before you know I put it in post, and I don't have to worry about actually adjusting gain too much. So I have the waves pretty good, you know, for what I think it is 18 or 13. I mean, it is pretty good for what I do, or at least what I'm doing right now. And the playback, you can't play back the audio, obviously, as you're recording because there's nothing to play back. Settings, you have your 32-bit flow, 24-bit flow, headphone volume. If you have like uh, Bluetooth headphones connected to your phone, you can hear it through them too. And you can also turn off the light and stuff and adjust the brightness of the actual recorder. One more thing I wanted to mention about the Track E is that it used to only be able to feed audio, you know, recording to the actual device. And now instead of having a Sync E, let's say you run out of Sync E's and you, need one, and you have an extra Track E, you can now jam sync time code to your camera through the headphone jack of the Track E. Now this allows you to, again, basically use it as a Sync E instead of a Track E and it, it's great. Wonderful. I'll probably be doing that because the trackies are pretty expensive. There are, I think, 300 for two of them, which isn't too bad because if you buy one, it's 229. Ideally, you'd want to get two. And I plan on doing that. Um, both of these, the track E and the Sinky, will be linked in the you know affiliate link down below, and you can go buy them through there. And they're pretty cheap. I mean, for what they are, like the Sony mic, this one whole Sony wireless mic and the receiver and transmitter. Back then, it used to be like 700 bucks. Now you can get them for about 600. They're pretty expensive for what you get in the quality of them they're pretty good quality audio wise but again the wireless connection is gonna be horrible you don't want to have that problem whenever you're out filming you don't want to be worrying about that constantly and again shotgun mics only get you so far like 72 paces far and it's ideal for up close videos if you're vlogging perfect you don't need you know either one of these other than this and you'll be fine but I prefer to have lav mics because I'd be moving around I usually have a filmer and it's just a lot better because if I turn around the audio is still gonna stay the same rather than it you know, sounding a lot softer if my back's towards the camera. So the real question is, would I use the wireless system over the Track E system or the Track E system over the wireless system? For corporate videos or anything that requires, make sure I have good audio. There's no issues that can come with it. I have to make sure I can adjust it in post. I definitely would go with the Sync E, I mean the Track E and the Sync E, and because it's 32-bit flow, because that's perfect, because some clients like to talk a little bit softer, some like to talk a little bit louder, and I don't gotta worry about any of that. I literally make sure I'm recording on the app, because that's ideal. You can also start the recording on the device, but it's just better to start it in the app. At once, you can record, start recording all of them at once. That's ideal for whenever you're doing corporate stuff. If I was shooting YouTube videos like every other YouTuber does in public, I would probably stick to the wireless system. This is generally because this little system right here is a little bit bigger, of course, like I'll show you the size difference um, it's not much bigger but it's a little bit bigger there you go we can get you that there and I like this a lot better because it's so simple I literally just plug this up to the camera connect it to the headphone jack and uh, not headphone jack the audio port and I can just go if I'm worried about audio I can just have the filmer or whatever have headphones in make sure audio sounds good and that's all I have to do with the track E I have to make sure I'm recording on the app like I did before this I didn't re click record on accident and I completely forgot two or lost two minutes of audio for a clip I just shot so ideally yes I would use this over the sinky in 
for fun type videos. Again, another benefit and a con of the Track E is that I could actually wirelessly boom this. If I don't want to, you know, have to deal with the crappy scratch audio on the Track E, I mean on the Sync E, I can just connect the shotgun mic to the Track E. I could have this wirelessly boomed up across, you know, pointing at them and I can have good scratch audio do it that way if I have two of these. But yeah, let's actually, you know, let's have a good sunset in the background for the outro. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and subscribe, share it with your friends, you know, if they want to learn about the Track E and the Sony systems and which one's better. Again, if you want to check out the Sync E or the Sony wireless mic or the shotgun mic that I use, they're all linked down below. They're all great mics in general. I do recommend all of them. There are different uses for different use cases. There's also the DJI mics that are, I heard are pretty good. Rode has the Rode Pro or something like that, Rode Go Pro, that um, is basically like the Rode Go 2 that is 32-bit float as well. But I heard the time code on that isn't as good as the Sync E's. So I would recommend using these over those if you're worried about time code. But if you're worried about a good Bluetooth like wireless system that shoots 32-bit float, definitely go to the Rode Pros. They're a little bit more expensive, but in general, you get two mics with it and you get a receiver and the scratch audio is pretty decent, I think, on the pros. So that's another good option. But I do recommend these if y'all are going to get them. Everything will be linked down below. Everything I'm talking about, link down below. Uh, use my link. It is an affiliate link, so I will get a little commission off your purchases, but it won't affect the price of what you're paying. It helped me out. It helps you out. You get a direct access to what you need. So yeah, that's the end of the video. Makai's pulling up on us right now, one of my friends, and I didn't know he was pulling up. But yeah, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to the channel and go learn something from me. I don't have my lens cap. I forgot it. So we're just going to use a hand today. So yeah. bye.